Dear students, in the last module we studied about the crime scene, different types of crime scene and the various examination patterns in a crime scene investigation. After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about significance of crime scene and how to protect, secure and isolate the crime scene. First, significance of crime scene. The most significant characteristic of evidence collection and the preservation is securing the crime scene. This is to preserve the pertinent evidence clean till it can be documented and collected. The successful examination of a case can hinge on the state of the physical evidence at the time it is collected. The protection of the crime scene starts when the first police officer enters and ends with its release from the police custody. Crime scene itself is on high value evidence when processed properly. Any police officer can be a first responding officer to a crime scene. A thorough training for all personnel of police departments should be done on the process of properly isolation and protection of the crime scene. The first responding officer should approach the scene slowly and methodologically. Protection of the crime scene also includes protection of crime scene investigators. A person, he may be either a civilian or a police crime investigator would by no means be left alone during handling of the scene. It is very true if the suspect has not been detained. There will be many stories of suspects hiding at or near this area of crime. Hence, there should always be at least two persons working the scene and should carry a radio and a firearm. In the case of a suspected criminal activity, the role of the physical evidence is crucial. That helps in the overall investigation and resolution of crime. The potential value of the physical evidences is realized based on the actions taken during the investigation of crime scene. Proper documentation and preservation of the physical evidences recovered from the scene of crime will have greater value due to the advancements and improvements taking place in the field of technology. The most important part is the preservation and recognition of the physical evidences that are obtained from the scene of crime and which readily helps in yielding trustworthy information pertaining to the investigation. Also, an important factor governing the scientific value of the evidence is that the crime scene investigators follow an objective, thorough and thoughtful approach. The crime scene investigators should always approach a crime scene with the notion that it will be their last chance of preserving and recovering the potential evidences. Also, during their objective assessment, the investigators should take into consideration statements obtained from witnesses and suspects and other information pertaining to the case. The physical clues and the inquiries related with the case that were initially thought to be inapt may help in solving the case wherein the investigations may change a number of times. It is recognized that all crime scenes are unique. The crime scene investigator giving the judgment with the help from the responders. For example, the prosecutor should be given in regard with the findings related to the case. It is impossible to propose a single step-by-step -step procedure to approach every type of situation. Therefore, while investigating a crime scene and also during preservation of evidence, fundamental principles needs to be followed. Now, we will discuss about protecting, securing and isolating the crime scene. Most of the times, the entry of additional personnel can create problems in securing the crime scene. Only those persons accountable for the immediate investigation of the crime, the securing of the crime scene and the handling of the crime scene should be present. The investigating officer cannot always reach the crime scene immediately after the occurrence. The first official who reaches the scene therefore should be careful to preserve the evidence. First is first responding officer should ensure the 
safety of crime scene, preserve evidence that is protect area, limit exchange request team and separates the witnesses. Second, all items must be documented and photographed. Third, scan the scene to determine what photos are needed. Many determine primary and secondary crime scenes. Fourth, the lead investigator evaluates the scene and determines the boundaries. They do an initial walkthrough and develop a strategy. Fifth, do an initial walkthrough. This should be done along with the initial responding officer who can add any information they may have obtained prior to your arrival. Sixth, develop a strategy for systematically work. First, examining or investigating the crime scene. Second, documenting the crime scene investigation. Seventh, interview initial responding officers. This would include law enforcement officers responding to the initial call. Backup officers who responded to the scene. Eighth, first priority is to provide medical assistance to individuals. The injured body or bodies must be checked first for any signs of life. In case there are only few chances of life, medical help should be called in immediately to transport injured to the nearest hospital. In this process, care must be taken to disturb the scene to minimum extent. Ninth, establish the scope and range of the scene. This includes physical boundaries of the scene, secondary scenes such as associated vehicles or relevant sites outside the physical boundaries of the scene. Tenth, anything from the scene should not be removed. Anything present at the scene should be recorded by sketches and photographs. Eleventh, every person who enters the crime scene has the potential to destroy the physical evidence. Twelfth, identify all other persons who have or have had access to the scene. This would include other law enforcement officers, coroner's personnel, any public safety personnel like fire, ambulance, etc. Any civilians present such as residents, neighbors, news persons, etc. Thirteenth, non-essential persons should never be permitted to enter into secured crime scene until they have important role in the crime scene investigation. One way to discourage needless people from entering the crime scene is to make only one entrance and exit into the crime scene. An officer can be placed here with a notebook to take the names of all the people entering the crime scene. The officer should then notify them that by entering the crime scene, they may create a difficulty by forming probable contamination and the reason behind the officer taking their names is in the case the crime scene investigators required to collect fingerprints, shoe prints, fibers, saliva, blood, dragged head hair or pulled pubic hair from all those entering the crime scene. This will sometimes discourage non-essential person from entering the crime scene. The officer can also stop unwanted visitors from entering the restricted areas. If extraneous people do have to enter the scene, then make sure that they are escorted by someone who is working on the scene. This is to make sure that they will not inadvertently destroy any valuable evidence or leave any worthless evidence. Fourteenth, all unauthorized person including friends and relatives of the victim, media, onlookers should be eliminated from the scene first. Fifteenth, ropes or barricades and guards will prevent unauthorized access to the area. Sixteenth, the scene of crime should be barricaded so that the scene remains unaltered. The larger area must be barricaded instead of smaller one so that no clues, evidences is left out. Seventeenth, personnel of home guard 
or similar organizations should be employed to protect the sea if required. 18. The police officer should not leave the crime scene unguarded. 19. Eating, drinking or smoking should never be allowed at a crime scene. Not only can this wreck a crime scene, but it can also be a health hazard. 20. Physically secure the scenes with police line tape or by means other than that have law enforcement officers available to enforce the scene perimeter. 21. Establish the perpetrator's path of entry and exit. This includes identifying any obvious pieces of evidence that comes to the attention of the crime scene investigator. 22. If the culprit is found red-handed or positively, he should be immediately arrested. 23. Only the officer in charge of the case should determine when, why and who is to enter the scene of crime. 24. Assistance of forensic experts, medical legal experts, police officers, photographers should be requested at the earliest if required. 25th, the details of informant with his address, the time when he gave information and the alleged time of occurrence should be recorded. 26th, ask the following question. When did the crime occur? Who called in the crime? Who is the victim? Can the perpetrator be identified? What did you see happen? And where were you when you observed the crime scene? All these questions are important and have to be asked at the scene of crime by the investigating officer. 27. It should be made sure that suspect and witness do not discuss the case with each other. 28. The case should not be discussed with the suspects, the complainants, the victims, the witnesses, the onlookers or the pressmen. 29. The behavior of the persons around should be observed. 30th, the officer should not introduce any material like foot, footwear, cigarette ash, cigarette ends and fingerprints at the crime scene. 31st, till the examination is finalized, the doors, windows, staircases, lighting, routes of ingress and egress should be preserved in original condition. 32. The officer should record his own time of arrival, note and record the weather conditions. 33. Some things the officer should note include the condition of the doors, windows and lighting, both natural and man-made. If there are any signs of activity, if any cases alteration of position of object is made, which is permitted in emergencies, then record the changes if made. How EMS or fire personnel have altered the scene. Anything essential about the suspect, description, statements, physical condition, mental condition, intoxication, etc. Anything essential about the victim. The officer should make mental or written notes about the condition of the crime scene as it was upon the officer's arrival and after the scene has been stabilized. The officer should keep notes on the significant times involved in responding to the crime scene, time dispatched to scene, time left for scene, time arrived at scene, time left scene, etc. If any odor of alcohol, tobacco, explosives and perfumes are observed, it should be noted. 34. Investigators and other necessary personnel should be contacted and dispatched to the scene. However, under no circumstances should the telephone at the scene be used. 35. The officer or any other person should not use the utilities of the scene such as lavatory, wash basin, bathroom, etc. 36. The scene should not be clean no matter how messy it is. 37. Try to prevent collusion. 38. Securing the scene. 
This can be difficult on occasion, especially in case of high profile cases where news persons and onlookers may become unruly or persistent. Also, high profile cases attract high ranking law enforcement persons who technically have nothing to do with the case and have no business being on the scene. We will conclude this module with the summary. Protecting the crime scene is the most important aspect of evidence collection and preservation. Any police officer can be a first responding officer to a crime scene, so an intensive training for all personnel of police departments should be done on how to properly protect, isolate and secure the crime scene. First responding officer should ensure the safety of crime scene, preservance of evidence, protection of area, limit exchange and separating the witnesses. All items must be documented and photographed. Provide medical assistance to individuals on priority. In this process, care must be taken to disturb the scene to minimum extent. Anything from the scene should not be moved. Every person who enters the crime scene has the potential to destroy physical evidence. All unauthorized person, including friends and relatives of the victim, media, onlookers should be eliminated from the scene first. Ropes and barricades and guards will prevent unauthorized access to the area. The scene of crime should be barricaded so that the scene remains unaltered. The larger area must be barricaded instead of smaller one so that no clues or evidences are left out. Personnel of home guard or similar organizations should be employed to protect the scene if required. The police officer should not leave the scene unguarded. Establish the perpetrator's path of entry and exit. This includes identifying any obvious pieces of evidence that comes to the attention of the crime scene investigator. If the culprit is found red-handed or positively, he should be immediately arrested. Assistance of forensic experts, medical legal experts, police officers, photographers should be requested at the earliest if required. The details of informant with his address, the time when he gave information and the alleged time of occurrence should be recorded. It should be made sure that suspect and witness do not discuss the case with each other. The case should not be discussed with the suspects, the complainants, the victims, the witnesses, the onlookers or the media personnel. The officer should not introduce any material like foot, footwear, cigarette ash, cigarette ends and fingerprints at the crime scene. The officer should record his own time of arrival and note and record the weather conditions. Investigators and other necessary personnel should be contacted and dispatched to the scene. The scene should not be clean no matter how messy it is. Try to prevent collusion. All these are important in crime scene investigation and its protection.